Hello, this is Jason Green with Zermo, and today I'm going to talk about one of the new features in the application, which is a jobs manager, also known as scheduled task or scheduled jobs. So let's just give a, an example of a job in the system. So one very simple example would be a currency, oops, currency updater. Now, every so often the currencies change their uh, rates and this needs to be updated. So this is something that would be nightly. Another example of a job would be the geocoding, which is another new feature in the application. Basically, whenever an address is added to the system, latitude and longitude information is added to that address so that it can be properly mapped. And then also in the future, we could do some interesting uh, uh, mapping calculations and different searches. And then a third example would be an import update. So for example, when you do an import, it creates temporary uh, database tables, and this needs to be cleaned up via an import update. Now, this is only going to run every week because it's, it's kind of just a cleanup task, and there's really not a lot of imports that you're going to have. And so every week it would run and uh, clean, clean up and remove any database tables. So these are just three examples of jobs. Now, in a few minutes here, I'm going to talk about how you actually make these run on, uh, on, an, on an actual like frequency using either a cron tab or a schedule task in Windows. The other part to the job manager is the um, monitor job. So this is a special type of job. And this job runs, well, it should run every two minutes. And what the monitor job does is it literally just looks at all the other jobs in the system. And it says, hey job, are you running okay? And if the job, let's say the job started. So a job might have started and, um, you know, let's say it started at, you know, 3 p.m. So there's special information that each job has that will say how long is it allowed to run for. So maybe the import cleanup's only allowed to run for 60 seconds. So the monitor job sees it started at 3 p.m. And then basically at 3.05 p.m., this import cleanup is still running. And so it says, uh oh, it's still running. So that means the job is stuck. Now, at this point, the monitor job will add a notification using the notification engine in the system. And then also because being stuck is considered critical, so there's certain types of notifications, and one of them is critical. So on top of adding a notification, uh, to, to the administrative users, it will also email administrative users at that point as, as well, saying that jobs are stuck. So this is, a, this is a nice way to make sure the health of your system is working. So that let's say in the future we have a job such as, um, oh, I don't know, maybe something for email where they're sending like an SMTP, you know, and then there's something that does SMTP, Maybe there's an SMP test, so make sure SMTP is working. It's not even sending campaign emails or anything, and maybe every, you know, I don't know, every one hour it does an SMTP test. And so basically the monitor job can then detect whether that is stuck or working or broken and send out alerts about that. So it's, it's a great way to keep the administrators completely uh, up to date on what's happening in the system. Okay, so now what I'm showing you is the job manager administration screen. And, and you can see that it shows the monitor job and when it was last completed. And then it also shows other available jobs in the system, such as the import cleanup or currency rate updater job. It also shows a frequency recommendation for how often you should run them. Now, this information is what you would use when setting up the cron or scheduled task. Uh, which I'm going to get into in a second. And then also under status, it shows, for example, if it's running, if it's literally running in process right now. If it is stuck, it will show a little link that says reset. So any job that is stuck, you can click from the user interface and, re and reset, uh, reset the job. You can also click on the job log, and that will show you uh, information about all the jobs that have run each time the job runs, it'll show whether it was completed or there were errors. And if there were errors, you can click on the errors to see what is going on. So it gives you a nice 360 degree view of what's going on with your automated jobs that are running on some sort of frequency. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a little bit of what exactly is going on, maybe a little higher level of uh, how this whole uh, scheduled job process works. Now, remember in Linux, you would use cron. Okay, if you use Linux, you're going to know what I'm talking about. If you're a Windows person, basically you're running on Windows, you would use scheduled task. And basically, what are your scheduled tasks in your cron are going to do? So if you already know, you should already know what Zermo C is, okay? That is a command line uh, command that you can run. And I'm going to make another video explaining how to run command line commands. But basically, there's a bunch of different command lines in Zermo. And one of those is um, Job Manager. And basically what would happen is, is you'd have a cron tab. I'm just going to use a Linux example. And so the cron tab is going to call this uh, command. It's, it's going to run the command line for uh, the job manager. Okay, so then the job manager... And, and what's going to happen is, is when you run the job manager, you're actually going to specify which job you're going to run. So you're actually going to have... Uh, let's say you're gonna. We're talking about the currency, and we're talking about the job honor. So you're actually gonna have a cron tab. So your cron is gonna have an actual entry for um, monitor. It's gonna have an entry for currency updater. It's gonna have an entry for you know import cleanup. And so the cron tab then will specify. Um, you know what the frequency is for each of these different jobs and so every single job you have you're gonna have to enter a new cron entry or for example in Windows you'd enter a new scheduled task so uh, when it calls the commands uh, one of the parameters it passes and actually I'll just show that real quick okay so here we are and we would type Zermo C um, job manager we would specify the user and we would also specify the job. So in this case it would be import cleanup. So you're 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 specifying the user it's going to run as and you're going to specify the job. Now if we were going to do the monitor, we would do the monitor, all right? Okay, back to our, our grid here of what's happening. So you're going to have these different crons or different scheduled tasks and and that's going to call them and uh, that connects up to the job manager thing in the system. Now, you, you might be wondering, you know, why did I set this up um, so that, you know, instead of having just one cron or one scheduled task that calls one command, and then the system manages um, the, system manages the uh, process of the frequency and all of that, I decided to utilize what is natively in Linux, which is the cron tab, or in Windows, the schedule task, which it's designed for doing what it does really well. And so I decided there's no reason to reinvent the wheel, and we should have the CRM, to have the Zermo focus on what it does best, which is CRM, and utilize the native tools in the environment uh, that you're running the application in um, to, to do what they do best. Now, another reason that I did this is, for example, let's say you have you know, Zermo set up on this server, right? Uh, we'll call it server one, right? But let's say you have Zermo on server two. You have, you have a second server. Now let's just say, for example, this server two, well, actually, it, it really d doesn't it, it matter in this particular example. But let's say this is a reporting server. So let's say you run some sort of uh, scheduled reports Okay, and so what you could do is, for example, on one of the servers, you could have only one of the crons run, and this will work. Even though the monitor might be running on server one, if you have your reporting uh, cron running on uh, server two, then that job will run on server two. And so maybe maybe that cron that has to run for the reporting schedule reports, you know, maybe that takes a half an hour to run, and that just spikes the CPU and takes up a lot of processing. Well, that's great. You know, it's a completely separate process. It's completely decoupled from everything else happening. And so actually, by being able to utilize different cron tabs for all the different jobs, you actually have a lot more flexibility, especially as you start scaling up with Zermo and you start adding more complexity 
and, and more users and, and, you, and you just up the records and it just adds a lot more flexibility to what you're doing. And I, I mean, I suppose initially it's a little more complicated because now you have to add, you know, I don't know, you have to add five jobs instead of one job and you have to know how to use the cron tab. Which we'll have a wiki article, you know, really explaining, you know, how you set how you set that up and the recommended lines for that. Um, but I felt this was the best way to set this particular uh, aspect of the system up, and I hope I hope everyone uh, agrees as well. Okay, so this pretty much concludes the video on the scheduler task. Uh, I would like to mention that there are or will be other resources to understanding what's going on. We have UMLs, which we will publish. We have flowcharts, uh, which we just need to publish, which explains how the job process works. And we'll probably make a nice wiki article explaining uh, crons and schedule tasks and how to do them. And then obviously on the forums, if you have any questions about this, post your questions on the forums. Um, and someone will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and you were able to learn about the job manager. And uh, have a great day.